And in your, everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Test, test. All right. Cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, do I clip this somewhere? Or... Yeah. I'm just going to put it in my pocket. Okay. Cool. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to talk about, no, I'm going to rant about personality and character design. Um, it's something that in, in, in my years being a character designer is something that um, I've seen across a, like a little bit of a misconception with people that want to get into character design. So my first question here is who currently is a student? Cool. Who's a working professional? All right. Out of the students, who wants to be a character designer? All right. Most of you are lying to yourself. Out of the working professionals, who is a character designer? Okay, most of you are living a lie. <laughs> so, a little bit about me. Um, I run Sketch Studio. It's a very small, compact um, core team of experts, and we help most new IPs with their brand building on the character creature side of things, as well as some prop design. Um, and I also run ArtWad, which is basically a workout program to help people get into the field of concept art and drawing from imagination. That's it about me. If you want to know more about me, you can do it after the event. Um, so I start this presentation usually with a little quiz. And all you have to do right now is just raise your hand, okay? So this guy, character or no character? <laughs> the guy, so, so is he a character or not? not yes or no? So oh, yes is hands up. <laughs> okay, sorry, that wasn't clear. Yes is hands up. No is keep your hands down. Okay, cool. Character or no character? All right. Character or no character? All right, nice. Cool. So everyone who raised their hand for the first one, who's this? Tony Stark, right. If we replace him in the suit, is that still the same character? Interesting. Jinx obviously made into a much better character through Arcane. Uh, we would all agree, I think. And then Spidey here, same exact problem, is played by many different characters, right? Sometimes even when you talk about the movie, you ask yourself, who's your favorite Spider-Man? Sort of implying different characters are playing the same character. So the reason why I ask is a lot of you want to get into character design. And what you sort of think you're going to do is create very interesting characters, right? Usually what you plan on doing is this, right? And unfortunately, what you end up doing is this, <laughs> right? And that's why you need art one. So for me, what is a character? A character is an actor in a particular story with a set of objectives. Now, we'll go about this deeper a little later, but actor is for me the main thing, right? Actors evoke empathy and emotion. That's what a character, or a good character at least, does. So a character for me has four attributes. They drive story. That's very important. Now, it doesn't mean because I say drive story, they can also drive gameplay, right? Story is part of gameplay, so characters can you know, be part of gameplay and can be developed in gameplay. But that's not enough, right? We need to be able to relate to characters. And this is something, this is like a, a very big pitfall that I see with character designs that will go about, but you should remember relate. We want to relate to characters. And the reason I say this is that characters are not talking costumes. They're not talking costumes. Why not is because of that previous part. We want to be able to relate to them. And to give you a little bit of an example is, most of us, hopefully here, know this scene, right? Remember or imagine how less impactful it would be if it looked like this, right? So we want to be able to relate to characters. And lastly, characters are unique. Just like everyone in this room, we're all unique with either, you know, Unique aesthetics, unique personalities, all of that. We're all unique. 
So those are like four traits that characters have for me. Now here's the problem with gaming, especially I call it the future of gaming. It's already like almost the, the present of gaming is the games as a service principle. Now the problem with this is that the games are no longer very story driven. They're perpetual, right? They keep going. So the story kind of gets diluted, which means we need more characters, quote unquote, like this, where we don't relate to it, but we feel like we're the character, right? So we identify as the character, which is something very different. So actually, they're not characters, they're avatars, right? They're a representation of ourselves. And that's a big difference. So I am very much team character, okay? If you look at this on the left, some of my favorite characters, whether it be Jinx, Django, Emily, Hans, Kratos, we relate to these characters. I do not identify as a gestured girl throwing around rocket launcher, right? I don't identify as an African-American cowboy. I don't identify as a French girl uh, living in a fantasy world. I don't identify as an SS general and I don't identify as a Greek god, although my wife would tell you differently. <laughs> On the right, we have Team Avatar, right? These are more like avatars you can identify with. You can express your own identity with. So it's almost like an extension of your character, but it's not actually a character. We don't relate to them. So what do good characters have? Good characters have an objective. They need to get to something, whether it's in game, whether it's in a story. They need skills to reach those objectives. Can be very human skills, can be you know, very cool magical skills, whatever, but they have skills. And then they have a certain look. Now, not to depress anyone in this room, but looks is the least important thing, but it's our job, right, to give them looks. Um, but looks is what we do. So how do we make a good looking character? And again, for me, it's three things. Characters need to portray personality, right? That's the thing. We want to have personality in our characters, whether it's through expression, attitude, certain features, like what we have, what makes us characters and personalities in this room. Then animation, right? And I'm talking this from a concept art point of view. I'm not talking as an animator. There's many different principles in animation, but I'm talking from a concept art point of view. As a concept artist, we can already animate our characters, right? So most of the time when you start your character design journey, you'll be like, this will be your character, right? Very boring. You want to animate your characters, especially if you want to sell something to a team that is building, a, building an IP, world building. You want to be able to pose those characters, have them act or interact with something. And you, have, you want to have them give, you, know, you want to give them intention or a skill. And then shape language, which most of you should have heard about here is shape language is sort of a catalyst for those you know, former two. Shape language acts as that supporting role for personality and animation. So good versus bad. Here begins the rant. Here are two of my favorite characters, Timon and Pumbaa. Perfect example of good characters. Why? They each have their own personality. Right. Very typical personality, both Timon, both Puma. And those personalities are supported by fantastic animation. Right. Animation sort of gives you an impression about their personality, how they walk, how they act, whatever, how their facial expressions move. And the shape language supports, again, those personalities and animation. And that's why you'll understand why I think this is a cluster of a movie because it doesn't do that same effect. Basically, you have the talking costume problem. You have voice acting, which can be fantastic, but it's empty shells, right? There's no animation or not at least good animation. There's no shape language to support it. And so we're losing a bit of that character. Now you could argue, well, Antonio, that's not really a fair comparison because it's like live action, real life versus, you know, animation, much more stylized. You know, there's much more room to do this. And I would say you're wrong 
because it's been done beautifully in live action, right? Smeagol or Gollum or Smog are fantastic examples where they do this. They use good animation, good personality, and shape language, definitely like even with, with Smeagol or Gollum, it's like the split personality and they use shape language like the baby eyes, you know, bigger head to sort of show the, the softness of this character, right? And then when it's Gollum, it's like more harsh and it's like, you know, it, everything supports that personality in that character. Same for Smog, same thing. Now then you could still argue, well, still not a fair comparison because Although it's live action, these are fantastical characters, right? They're not based on real animals, so it's not a fair comparison. And I would say, you're right. So stop making these fucking movies. Because who wants to see this, <laughs> right? No one. Anyway, on to personality. So if we want to create personality in a character, we can do it through expression, just simple expression, right? Even if it's wild sketch, simple sketches or a little bit more rendered, you know, it can be anything. It can be very subtle. You can show how gentle they are, stoic, confident, menacing, batshit crazy, or goofy. Right? You can do it through expression. You can also do it through posing. And it can be simple posing, right? I'm talking here, again, from a concept art point of view. We're trying to sell a character to a team that can then use it in different departments, right? But you can sell it through posing, whether you wanted to make them a little confident or curious, adventurous or cocky, right? You can all do this through subtle acting and animation. And animation for me is really important because what I like about animation is when you create a character,